back to another edition of In the Huddle with Stacey Carter talking Science Hill football. I'm your host, Tom Taylor, and glad to have you with us. And again, another great week of Hilltopper football. And Coach, gosh, we came out and got us a big win the other night, but uh, it was kind of a costly win. We lose, maybe not lose Magoo, but he wasn't 100%. We did lose Bedard early in the football game, so uh, we found ways to win. We'll talk about that later on in the show. But uh, again, we didn't come with all the all the guns ablaze on Friday night. Well, we didn't have everybody that we usually have, but uh, some guys stepped up, and we was able to get it done. Uh, things didn't go our way. It was one of those games, and uh, Tennessee High has a good football team and had a good plan, and uh, we're able to execute their plan, and uh, some bad things went uh, wrong early, and uh, but we were able to overcome it. And, uh, of course, Malik, you know, he was still hurt from the B.A. game uh, with his uh, burst of sack being bruised, but uh, he should be getting better every week. And then our uh, option to go with Justin, of course, uh, he went down the second series, was running the ball great, and he would probably have played a lot of quarterback to take the heat off of Malik because we could run the football. So uh, it really uh, really changed the plan. But uh, fortunately, our O-line and Mikey White and the defense was able to step up and make the plays to win the football game. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago, given the fact that, again, uh, you know, you said – as you get deeper into the season, the weather will have an impact on your offense. Some nights you're just not on offensively, so guys can come up. There will be injuries, obviously, as the season wears on, so there are opportunities and situations where we have to uh, be flexible, and that's what happened the other night. Again, you lose Magoo, Bedard, and then Mikey steps up, and the offensive line steps up, and other kids stepped up, so that's a sign of a good football team. Well, I mean, they I think they knew their backs were against the wall, and Elijah Mathis really stepped up also. Those uh, those two skill guys and our offensive line, uh, you know, defensively we played well, but they were just moving at about three or four yards a clip, and every time they got a spot, they leaned for it. They were giving them where the ball actually fell instead of when their knee hit, and it, and it was hard. They were getting four yards extra time. They were – well, when they blew blew the uh, blew the whistle in, it was about 15 seconds because they were actually getting like 40 seconds off the clock before we started the next play, which uh, shortened the game. Great game plan by Coach Mays, and uh, and, and they did a super job with that. And uh, they they didn't make many mistakes. Really, the only mistake Tennessee High made was when they dropped the snap and were able to capitalize on it for a touchdown. So uh, if you can play m- mistake-free football and you're playing that well, uh, I mean it's a great game plan. Now if you're getting a lot of penalties. You have turnovers. It could be a disastrous, but uh, they were able to do what they plan on doing. Absolutely. Of course, on a personal note, before we go to the break, your 100th victory as a head football coach, pretty special. I know uh, you kind of take that in stride, but uh, that shows you've been at it for a while. Obviously, you've had some great kids and and great coaches. So uh, congratulations, kudos to your 100th career victory as a head football coach. Well, thank you. And that's uh, that's all to do with the players that I've been with and the coaches I've been blessed with. Uh, I mean, we we have really had some good players over the last year from here and Southern South. I mean, there was all kinds of great players. So uh, and that that's why those wins are there. Could have won money. I knew that's how I was going to say it and how I was going to approach it. That's why I love the guy. Head coach Stacy Carter, again, his 100th victory against 30 defeats as a head football coach, and I knew he would. This is the way he is. He passed that uh, praise and accolades on to his coaches and players down through the years. We'll take a quick break. Come right back. We'll jump in and see some some uh, great highlights of a great Science Hill victory last Friday night against a very good Tennessee High Viking team. You're watching In the Huddle with head coach Stacy Carter as you watch Science Hill Hilltopper football. From the day they're born, there's one thing most Johnson City families look forward to. Sure, for the baby to be healthy, smart, and happy, but also to be a topper, a Science Hill Hilltopper, for them to be part of one of the best high schools in Tennessee, where they'll be academic achievers, make friends for life, and play sports like no one else. So for all of those budding toppers out there, be patient, you'll have your day. From Champion Chevrolet Cadillac, where we think being a topper is an experience they'll remember for a lifetime. Wake up to a new, better breakfast. It's Golden Corral's tastier than ever ultimate weekend breakfast buffet. For one low price, it's our new buttermilk pancakes, bacon, sausage, signature omelets, and more, juice included. It's a better breakfast, and it's only at Golden Corral. (laughs) 
And welcome back in the huddle head coach Stacy Carter. I'm your host, Tom Taylor, talking Science Hill football. Again, another big win for the Hilltoppers, 35-29. As we said before the break, Coach Carter's 100th career victory as a head football coach. This week in the Big 7, of course, Tennessee High, uh, they will be homed against Dobbins Men of the Stone Castle. Crockett will be in uh, Hawkins County down at Churchill to battle the Volunteer Falcons. Uh, Daniel Boone has an on-conference game against Greenville in gray. And, of course, Science Hill goes to Sullivan Central. We'll talk more about that coming up in a moment. Coach, we normally come out of the gate scoring a lot of points in the first quarter. Did not happen last Friday night against Tennessee High. They had something to say about that. And obviously with a very good football team. So it was kind of toe-to-toe, a tie ball game uh, in the first quarter, 7-7. Well, the way we started wasn't too good. We got the ball like we want to get the ball. And, uh, you know, we won the toss, got the ball. And uh, our first two snaps, uh, we had uh, mishandled snaps. Uh, and kind of two bad snaps, and it went back, took us all the way back to the five-yard line, not where you want to start. Uh, and then we're third and long uh, right there. We uh, we were kind of wanted to play conservative, ran the ball. I think we uh, – Justin broke a 25-yard run, and we still didn't get a first down. That's that's how back, far back we were. So, uh, you know, definitely out of the gate, uh, that was self-induced. And then you're playing a good football team where we punted the ball. Gave it back to Tennessee High. They uh, did a trick play. Uh, Mikey White sniffed it out perfectly. Was standing right there. Had about six inches on the guy. He was going to catch the ball and uh, fell down. Just to completely fell down. They catch it and go in for a score for their first score for a big momentum boost for them. So that's how the game started. And then they executed the game plan uh, very well, too. But some of that was self-induced on us. And then we get our first touchdown once Science Hill gets rolling, the Hilltopper machine, and we get our first touchdown. Here's the highlight. Describe this play. T.J. Delaney scores from four yards out. Well, T.J. comes in, and uh, Justin was got, got hurt, and T.J., uh, I mean, he's been chomping a bit for his chance, and he's a very good player and uh, got good speed, and uh, it was just a zone play, and he ended up making a good – moved to the left side and and snuck in the end zone for a, a big score and, and it was it was just uh, something we needed you know the at that time the momentum was going against us we did we had a big turnover on a on a huge pass play and uh, TJ was able to come in and get a great run well, you are watching in the huddle with head coach Stacy Carter we're talking Science Hill football I'm your host Tom Taylor so that's the first touchdown and then Mikey White I guess if you gambled if he was a gambler going to Vegas the, he'd be a lucky six he had three touchdowns. Here's the first one, all three from six yards out. So here's the first highlight. Uh, describe this touchdown by Mikey White. Well, um, Mikey had great runs all night, and uh, that offensive line they re- they really stepped it up. And uh, it, it this is zone play. We we ran the zone play. We have a couple different ones, and, and he he was able to take it in, um, and just just another super run. I mean, he has great eyes. I think you can see it on this run. You can see it on all the runs he had uh, uh, that that night. I mean, he just had a tremendous run. Another Hilltopper weapon again, Delaney. And now this time, of course, Mikey White again, a six-yard run. Uh, we go in trailing at halftime, 17-14. That, that has not happened that much this year either, that we go in trailing at the break, but we go in at halftime down by three. What would you tell the kids at halftime? Well, I mean, we were all on the kids, you know, and uh, trying to get them motivated and, and let them know what we had to lose. And, uh, you know, we had that, at that point we had played about as bad as you could play. Uh, you know, we gave them a field goal at, at right there at the end. A lot of it was my fault. We were trying to throw and move it, and we had a few mishaps uh, on the passes, and it could have been a lot worse to have. So uh, we challenged the kids. We knew Malik was uh, not able to run the football, and uh, Justin was down. Uh, challenged Mikey to come out in the offensive line just to kind of take it on their shoulders and they were able to do that and uh but you know definitely definitely had to get with them and just let them know what this team has to lose and how far we've come and uh and it you know our team team is probably you know tired from all the traveling but it was just one of those times they had to suck it up because they had a lot at stake how much does fall break play into it again the school was out uh, starting the break uh, last friday uh, the crowd was down a little bit because a lot of folks travel and get out of town for that last kind of hurrah on the fall break. So does that carry over to your football team that they may not have been as crisp as they usually are because of fall break? I don't think that carried over to it. I think it was just, uh, you know, our kids were sluggish and some circumstances went against us. We had the bad snaps. We had Mikey falling down. And next thing you know, you're in a dogfight against a good football team. And uh, and they were executing their game plan. So it was just one of those things and everything went against us. But, uh, you know, just shows a lot about our kids. They were able to overcome it and different guys were able to overcome it. It wasn't the same guys that you usually see do it. Uh, there were some other guys that stepped up big and definitely like the O-line 
linemen. We've talked about them all night, and and Mikey and Elijah with those big runs, and our defense has hung in there. And it was hard to hang. It was one of those nights that was hard to hang in there and play. Let's go to the second highlight or second touchdown, I should say, Mikey White. Once again, a six-yard run in the third quarter. Again, describe this one for us, Coach. You know, it's the same stuff. I mean, he he had great eyes. He bounced it out across the field. Uh, he does that a lot. He cuts back, and, uh, and like I said, he, he sees very, very well when he's running. And, uh, and again, he's done that. We've played him a lot at receiver. He plays a, a heck of a lot at defense. So, uh you know, we knew he could do that. I think it's big for a program to see he can do that. He even did that against Brentwood. I mean, he was running that well against them, too. Probably only had about three or four carries. But uh, it's good to see Mikey step up and do that because we're going to need that down the road. Ranella, Magoo, Patton, White, Delaney, a lot of weapons. Bedard for our football team, as we've said earlier in the season on this show, pretty tough to defend Science Hill because you got a lot of different folks, usually some Magoo. Maybe Bedard. This week it was Mikey White and Elijah Mathis. We've had Patton in the past. So a lot of different weapons that the other teams have to defend to get ready for when they play the Hilltoppers. Yes, also Holly and Perkins. I mean, two other guys have had some big games for us. So those guys, a uh, lot, lot of different people. And uh, they just got to know that it's not going to be uh, the same one every time. Uh, sometimes it's going to take other guys. It's, this is the ultimate team game. And, uh, and they showed that. Uh, the other night and by, by being able to come back and, uh, and just proud of them because they really sucked it up and got it done when they had to. We're talking again to head coach Stacy Carter. You're watching Science Hill Football. The name of our show is In the Huddle. And tell your family, tell your friends to dial this thing in and watch every week. And we enjoy talking to Coach Carter. And uh, give me the update on Malik and also Bedard. Will they be ready to go this week? Malik's a whole lot better. Of course, he of course he was ready to go last week, but he will play. Uh, I don't think he'll be a hundred percent, but he'll be a lot better than he was last last week. You know, just a bruised burst of sack and in his quad there, and uh, and also uh, you know we're day to day on Justin. I'm sure he's going to be a lot better this week, but he had a high ankle sprain, so uh, you know still kind of waiting to see on him. Last touchdown highlight. Let's pick up Mikey White again, the six-yard run one more time. Again, another great run. You mentioned the first two, and this is his third one of the night. Also from six yards out, Coach set this one up one more time. Well, not much difference. I, I mean, him sitting there uh, looking, and, uh, again, it's his own play, and uh, he's able to cut uh, just by using his eyes. And and he he has great eyes. He, he really does. And that, and that's something that, you know, we didn't even know he could do this last year. And uh, we, we, we found out in the spring that he could play running back and do it at a high level. And this was, uh, you know, Mikey was tired. He was playing a lot of defense too. But him, it seemed like he got an extra gear. And I think he knew how much the team needed him. And he really stepped up and another great run. You challenged him at halftime to say, take this team on your shoulders and go. And he did. 92 of his 101 yards and two touchdowns came in the second half. He responded to your challenge, obviously. Uh, he definitely did, and uh, I, I think he knew it. Uh, he, he knew what was at stake, and uh, he knew that he it was time for him to take up the slack, and uh, and he was able to do it. And, again, along with those offensive linemen, too, because there were holes there, and, and he found them, but there were holes there. This last touchdown we're going to play for you, Elijah Mathis' 23-yard run. This looks like something off ESPN. You're talking about a highlight video. We can see it fast motion. Maybe we get a chance to see it in slow-mo. But, Coach, Math has put on the show. This guy just had a will to get to the end zone, and uh, this this was a heck of a run. You know, it was a great run, and, uh, you know, it kind of set up. We had a penalty there. Uh, I think we had it down to the five-yard line, and I uh, had a mythical holding penalty. I'll go ahead and say that it was. And uh, and we ended up running a jet sweep to the left. He cut it all the way back to the right. Just tremendous athlete, tremendous play. I think Elijah's had a big – two or three big plays every game for us. Uh, to, you know, to change the momentum and stuff. And that, and that definitely is something we needed at, at that time. As we go to the break, let's recap our season so far. We open things up in Elizabeth in 56 to 34. By the way, uh, kudos to Mr. Thomas, who became the all-time leading rusher in Northeast Tennessee football history last week. And, and you played him in game number one. This kid's the real deal, over 5,500 yards. I believe it is. He's the all-time leading rusher ever in the history of Northeast Tennessee football. Quite an honor for, for quite a young man, Mr. Thomas from Elizabethan. Yeah, a great football player, and we, we've seen this for a long time. I mean, he is consistent and uh, just keeps going and has carried the ball a whole lot of times for those guys. I am personally, and I think our team's glad we don't have to face him anymore. <laughs> uh, but it seems like he's been playing for six or seven years over there. So, uh, you know, we're, we're glad we're, – we're, we're, 
glad to see him play, have a great college career and not have to play him anymore. There you go. And surely he'll be playing somewhere on Saturday because the kid is a phenomenal talent. That was game one. Game two, we go to Crockett. Our conference opener wins 63-27. Come back home, shut out Morristown West, 48 nothing. Then we defeat Siegel here, 52-28. Go to Brentwood Academy and lose a barn burner a couple of weeks ago, 45-42. And, of course, Friday night we put the capper on a 35-29 victory over a good Tennessee high football team. I would think the Vikings will be a team that will be making some noise, and if they get into postseason play, I think they'll be a team to watch because they got a lot of tools, a lot of weapons. You know, they got a good coaching staff, and they got a good good bunch of players and a great bunch of running backs. And uh, if they can keep executing that game plan, and like I say, as long as they can keep on schedule and not let penalties or anything like that or turnovers slow them down, they're going to compete with everybody. Uh, now, if they can – hopefully they can continue to do that. That game plan works very well as long as you're very disciplined and you can keep doing like, like they played Friday. Wish them the best. Uh, got a good, great bunch of guys up there, and I think they'll uh, have a great end up having a great season, already have had a great season. We'll take a quick break, come back with our final segment. Again, you're watching In the Huddle with head coach Stacy Carter as you watch Science Hill Hilltopper football. Welcome back to In the Huddle, head coach Stacy Carter talking science of football. I'm your host, Tom Taylor. Get back to the business. Hilltoppers ranked again top 10 in the state this week in 6A football, and understandably so. Science Hill with a heck of a year going. And let's give you some stats from last Friday night's win. Science Hill rushed the football 21 times for 176 yards, uh, passing the ball 4 for 8 for 133 mostly from Malik Magoo. Uh, total offense coach 309, Tennessee High had 369. They had more offensive yardage, but we had, we had more points. That's what counts. But that shows you the caliber football team we beat Friday night. Uh, they're an explosive football team. They can, they can play. They definitely can, and they kept the ball. I mean, they had the ball about the, the whole game. Uh, we scored some quick, quick and actually took care of care of that one turnover, but, uh, you know, it's one of those nights. Uh, if uh, their coaching staff was probably pretty pleased with how it was executed and uh, and everything kind of went against uh, us from the start. Uh, but, you know, hats off those guys. Uh, just a fortune to get the win. We gave you the numbers on Mikey White earlier. Elijah Mathis, three catches, 113 yards. Of course, the rushing touchdown, another big night for him. But let's kind of spotlight the offensive line. The Hogs up front don't always get all the attention they deserve. Uh, let's face it, you've been around this, again, at least 100 victories under your belt. You know that that offense can only go with those guys up front are, are blocking and, and making the holes and running the plays. So the Hogs up front had a big night the other night. Now they definitely did. Uh, Malcolm White, uh, Daniel Hill, uh, Dylan, uh, D Dylan's just been outstanding for us. We're glad to have him back playing center for us also. Kalen Jameson coming there and doing great things. And then Reese Fain. We had some young ones on there too, which is a, which is a good thing. But uh, just uh, outstanding how they played. Uh, they don't get a lot of credit sometimes, but they were the reason that we won the game. They kind of took it on their shoulders more than anybody. And then Mikey kind of filled in there and did a great job too. But uh, just proud of those guys. And uh, they, and we really had to have them. I mean, we, if they didn't do that, we would not win the game because uh, it really falls on those guys. So we get to the Solomon Central Cougars in a moment of the playing in Bluntville this Friday night. Let's go back for just a second talk about the younger toppers, uh, your JV, your 9, 10s. Kind of explain how that works and tell us how those kids are doing right now. Well, some games will play a, a, a freshman and a JV schedule with Dobbins Bennett and uh, and some of the other bigger schools. Some of the, the smaller schools we've been playing just a nine ten, which we are a combination between our freshmen and our sophomores, and uh, and and they've done well. They they really have. We have played a lot of young guys up on our varsity all year, especially on the defensive side of the ball. So uh, those guys kind of took some licks early, but they're playing very well. They were able to beat uh, Dobbins Bennett last week and then able to beat Tennessee High uh, last night. So uh, great victories. Uh, freshmen are getting better every day. They really are. Uh, we did lose the DB on the last second on a on a two-yard line. We didn't score going in. But, uh, you know, the kids are playing well, getting a lot of good reps, and, uh, and just going to, you know, going to help this whole thing. I mean, they really are. Those guys, all we need to do is give them some playing time and get them uh, coached up and, and, and have positive experience, and we think that's what's happened for those guys. We'll have a report next week on the junior toppers. That's where the little ones start, and they kind of work their way up the system into the middle school and then ultimately up to be with Coach Carter on the varsity. So the junior toppers, about uh, 200, 250 kids, I'm told, are involved in this program. So we'll try and get a report about them next week because that's where it all gets started. That's where they learn the foundation and the fundamentals, the basics to come on up and ultimately be varsity hilltoppers, right? Uh, 
it definitely does. And, you know, Bart does a great job with them. He actually helps with our uh, freshman also, Bart Line, And uh, he he's overall over the whole junior toppers program. And uh, just getting kids involved and kids excited about playing topper football, and that's what he does. And uh, there's there's no, no guy that it means more – to any to then Bart about how he runs that type of program, so uh, it's uh, it definitely helps the program out. So to use an old cowboy term, there's horses in the stable coming up for Science Hill Sports, certainly in football, and again with the uh, JV and the 9-10 teams, and as we said, the middle schools and the junior toppers. Coach, Friday night conference game always important. You got to go on the road this Friday night. You play in Blumble against the Central Cougars. Uh, obviously, folks can see the numbers. They're 0 and 3 and 1 and 5. So, uh, having a tough year for Coach Fox and and the scouting report and and on paper, obviously, Science Hill should be a big favorite. But we don't play them on paper. We play them on the field. So, a scouting report against the Cougars. Well, and definitely not as uh, not as good as team as they had last year. They're they're not. They're having a rough season. Uh, has some has some pretty good players. Uh, you know, I think we just got to focus on ourselves. Uh, we don't feel like we played very well. Uh, this last Friday and had some mental mistakes that we had to clean up. So I think that's what we have to do. And it, in this situation, it's a road game. Field's not in real good condition right now. It's probably going to get some rain. So, But we're just going to have to clean it up and worry about ourselves and, uh, and and just get ready. Hopefully these next three weeks, get ready and play very well and get ready for that big one at the end. Four games left. Of course, uh, this week will be at Sullivan Central. Then you go – back home to volunteer, come back home to volunteer. You go to Gray to battle Daniel Boone and then, of course, wrap things up on Halloween night here against Dobbins Minutes. So four big ones left. I do this about every three or four games. Grade your football team right now. We've been through a really tough stretch with Brentwood and Siegel. And, uh, of course, Tennessee I gave us a good run the other night. So A, B, C, or D, where's your football team right now? Well, I still think we're, you know, a B plus. And a lot of that's because of injuries. I mean, I think once once we get those healed up, we're going to be up there into the A level. I really believe we are, but uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, this happens, and uh, we got to get those guys healthy. And I think we have time to do that. So uh, once we do that, I think we're going to be able to make a good run in the playoffs. I would anticipate a good crowd of there Friday night in Bluntville to battle the uh, Cougars for the Hilltopper Nation. I'd say you have a good crowd up there to cheer on Science Hill. You need them. I mean, let's face it; these kids feed off the uh, the crowd, and when you have a bunch back there behind you screaming and hollering, having a big time. Kids feed off that. I've heard that all down through the years. And if fans think that doesn't matter, they're wrong. These kids, you've heard this too, they feed off the uh, the energy or the synergy, if you will, of, uh, of the crowd. Oh, they do. I mean, you see it in college football. You see it in pro football. It, it definitely means something. Uh, unfortunately, we're in our fall break, which is a hard time for football coaches. It really is. There's no fall break for uh, football teams or football coaches, and uh, everybody kind of takes a, a leave there for about a week, and uh, everybody leaves the schools and everything. We're still left here to uh, play well and, and keep going. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do what we have to do and hopefully get back in a roll after this fall break. Talk to you next week. Thank you. Go Toppers. Go Toppers. Yep. Head coach Stacy Carter, he's my buddy. Appreciate him very, very much. Again, you've been watching In the Huddle with Science Hill Football with head coach Stacy Carter. I'm your host, Tom Taylor. Join us next week again as we'll get ready for reviewing the Sullivan Central game and get ready for the Volunteer Falcons next week. So, once again, as we tell you each week, uh, as always, remember this, win or lose, be a good sport. So long. Bye.